everyone um, and thanks for joining the third Network Short course. So I am the second ESR of this Optimax project and I'm a PhD candidate at FEOP, the Faculty of Engineering of the University of Porto. And I'm currently seconded at Airbus Defense Space. So uh, before going through the presentation, I would like to thank my academic supervisor, Professor Arteiro and Professor Markish from FEOP and Professor Reynoso from the University of Sevilla. So as, um, as I said before, I'm one of the five ESRs of this project and um, my uh, research topic is about the development of uh, advanced failure models for composite materials. And today I will, I will be uh, describing a couple of failure models for composite materials. So first one, it's an advanced failure model uh, for the prediction of intralaminar failure, while the second one is a simplified approach to laminate failure. And in the context of the second uh, failure model, basically I will, I will show uh, some work that I did to extend this concept to consider 3D stress states. And finally, uh, some conclusion will be drawn. So when we talk about failure criteria, we are referring to those theories that uh, are able to uh, define the limit value in stress or strain space uh, beyond which the material shows uh, a certain level of, uh, of structural degradation. For composite material, many uh, failure criteria have been uh, proposed and uh, usually uh, they are classified in two groups. The non-phenomenological ones, uh, the most famous are Tsaihil or Tsaihu. Um, they are based on closed form solution, usually uh, obtained through a uh, um, process of fitting with experimental data. And they are not able to identify the, the failure modes. So we are not able to distinguish fiber failure from matrix failure. And the phenomenological ones, they uh, have stronger physical basis as they are able to identify the critical failure modes. Um, and the most advanced one are also able to capture uh, other important aspects such as the in situ effect or the effect of uh, hydrostatic pressure. So in my work, I have been using the 3D invariant base failure criteria, which is an advanced failure model uh, for, for the prediction of uh, intralaminar failure. And this is based on uh, uh, three stress invariants formulated here. Uh, in this slide, I'm basically showing the, 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 the formulation of uh, uh, matrix failure. So here we have the uh, failure function defined as a function of these three invariants and some uh, uh, failure parameter alpha. And we are able to distinguish matrix tensile failure from matrix compressive failure by the sign of the third invariant. So here we have some uh, uh, experimental validation. This is for transverse failure only. And we can see in the top left hand side uh, stress plot that uh, uh, the, the prediction using this failure model uh, correlates well with experimental data for different um, strain rates. So from the quasi static case in red to the high uh, strain rate in green here. The bottom uh, plot we have uh, the sigma 2 2 sigma 3 3 uh, stress plot and we see that uh, uh, with this failure model we actually um, have always closed failure envelope unlike the hashing criteria and in this last uh, plot the, the the aim is just to show that we also are able to to get uh, the, the the effect of hydrostatic pressure which is something uh, unique so uh, for the prediction of fiber failure, basically we use the maximum strain criteria for the for fiber tensile failure, while for fiber compressive failure, we have a more complex uh, model. Uh, so basically the assumption that we do is that uh, uh, the um, that fiber kinking is triggered by a matrix micro failure that basically lead to uh, to the instability of the, of the of the fiber and so fiber kinking 
and so for this reason we use the same uh, criterion as, as before so the matrix failure one but in the frame of a kink band which is defined in this picture uh, in which we see uh, basically uh, that it is identified by two angles so the angle of the uh, kinking plane psi and the kinking angle phi and by uh, doing that we can redefine the preferred direction which is no longer one zero zero but it's uh, a function of of uh, phi and psi and uh, then we can rewrite the invariance and so the, the the formulation will be the same as we have seen uh, before and this uh, this uh, this is the last example i will show uh, it's just to show that um, when we apply some compressive uh, sigma two to sigma three three stresses, we basically get an increase of uh, of strength due to the fact that we, when we apply some uh, uh, biaxial compression, um, basically uh, this act as an obstacle to the fiber rotation, so it kind of delay the the formation of a, of a kink band. So now we move to a simplified approach for the prediction of laminate um, failure. This is meant to simplify basically the laminate design and optimization. It's called uh, omnistrain uh, failure envelope, and this basically is the minimum uh, first play failure envelope in the strain space for all possible play orientation. We have a couple of examples here, uh, and we see that when we superpose all the different uh, failure uh, envelopes in strain space, we can basically take the minimum, which is this omni concept. And by doing that, we have a, um, a safe design space uh, that, um, that basically it's invariant with respect to the second sequence, of course. And uh, it's also able to uh, identify the controlling plies, which in this case are the zero and the 90 degree plies. Extend this uh, description of failure to last ply failure. Uh, degraded material properties have been uh, used with some degradation factor. Here we have an example, and we see that uh, um, even in this case, we are able to to of course to to check the controlling plies and um, and basically uh, since for most of the carbon fiber reinforced polymers zero and the 90 degrees are the the controlling plies for last play failure basically uh, another um, simplification was made with some degree of conservatism uh, which basically is this uh, unit circle uh, just using the two um, uh, strain to failure, the tensile and the compressive strain to failure as anchor points, um, they, they, were, they were able to, to, to uh, generate this, uh, this new failure criterion here. Um, so, um, so in this context of simplified approach, so in, in particular in this context of uh, Omni strain uh, envelopes. Since Tsai, when uh, he introduced this concept, he used the Tsai Wu failure criterion for the generation of each of these envelopes. Um, he was able to identify the controlling plies, as I said, but uh, not the uh, critical failure modes. So he would need, of course, the application of a, a phenomenological failure criterion. And uh, for this reason, I implemented the, uh, the 3D invariant based theory that I showed you before. And uh, doing that, uh, I was able to, to check the, to identify the, the critical failure modes for this, uh, for this Omni uh, concept. So uh, this way we are adding another uh, important information to this, uh, um, this uh, representation basically we see that uh, fiber failure is basically shaping the this on envelope and when we compare this to uh, omni uh, representation um, basically we see in uh, 
in a solid line we have the one obtained with Sahu, while in, in dotted line we have uh, the one obtained with the invariant based. And we see that uh, when we when we uh, use Sehu, we we basically obtain a less conservative uh, prediction. So uh, so I extend also this um, this implementation also for the prediction of uh, last play failure. This case for IM78552. Oh, I computed the degraded material properties, of course, and um, and this was the omni uh, last play failure that I was able to obtain. And uh, doing that, um, I was able to check basically that last play failure is dominated by uh, fiber uh, failure, also for this set of uh, failure criteria which is uh, basically consistent with the, with the observation that uh, Zeid made to introduce the unit circle. So uh, since the, the failure criteria that I showed is fully 3D, we can basically represent this omni-strain concept in, in also in the out-of-plane direction. So we basically obtain this 3D version of uh, uh, of the omni strain uh, envelopes. Uh, this is for first play failure. Uh, so, like this, we can basically account for a full 3D stress state. And this uh, will be for the prediction of last play failure. And here I'm including also out of plane uh, degraded material properties. Just to conclude uh, this presentation, I will show you some uh, some uh, experimental uh, validation analysis. So I took the experimental data from the first worldwide failure exercise, and um, I'm representing here the omni last play failure obtained with few failure criteria. So this is the, in green the book uh, Yamada-san in. Uh, uh, in black, the invariant based theory and uh, the say who in orange. For and for both cases, we can observe that uh, the correlation looks uh, looks good, um, except for this um, uh, this set of of data, which uh, are actually not 100% valid because uh, indeed they look a bit conservative. And I've read that uh, the the they are affected, the specimen was a bit affected by uh, instability. But in general, they look uh, they look a bit, uh, they are able to correlate well and and um, and they, uh, in this case, for example, they look a bit uh, conservative, uh, but that's uh, that is uh, consistent with the with the theory. And um, and I did the same study for for another material here for another laminate. Um, this is the same laminate, but uh, two different uh, biaxial text tests. And also in this case, we can uh, see that the they fit uh, quite well with uh, with experimental data. Just to summarize my work, uh, basically I've presented this omni-strain failure envelope, uh, which are able to give an invariant-based description of, uh, of failure for uh, composite materials. Um, I've shown also some validation analysis with uh, against experimental data from the worldwide failure exercise. And the idea is that this concept can speed up uh, the um, uh, the, the the conceptual and the, the, the preliminary design, for example, uh, it can be integrated in some optimization uh, framework. So um, I would like to thank you for your attention and. Uh,